So Becca, you know, today our guest on uh, Instagram account, it, the first thing that you see when you um, see it, which I love, it says, the universe always has plans for us. Yeah. So I wanted to uh, ask you, what are the plans that the universe has for you? Here's the great thing about the universe. It doesn't tell you. <laughs> you can't know those things, right? I mean, that's the whole belief system, right? That's the whole idea behind it, right? I struggled with that for a really long time because I'm not a religious person, right? And I'm not somebody who really ever believed in organized religion or God or any kind of big, powerful anything um, until I got really a lot older and I started to become a spiritual person. And so to me, there's a difference between being spiritual and being um, religious. And I didn't know the difference for a very long time. Um, but when you become a spiritual person, you kind of have to let go of some things that you don't have control over. And who do you let go of that control to, right? And so I always say, let the universe have it. Like the universe to me means whatever that power is, whatever the thing is that I don't have control over to me. Um, and so, yeah, I love that. I love the idea that it has plans for us, but I also have to remember that I don't get to know them. <laughs> for, for me, I, 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 I was pondering this question a lot this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> really focusing on it. I, I didn't really come up with any great answers, although the, the, the thing that I that kind of comes to my mind at this point in time, probably would have been different a year ago, five years ago, 10, 20 years ago, yeah. is that pretty much any desires or wishes that come my way, I feel like that's what the universe has for me. And then how do I make those things happen or not? But most of them usually revolve around supporting the autistic community, whether it's through my podcasting, coaching, or supporting mm -hmm. um, projects from the autistic community that I think are just awesome. So um, I think that's dope. I mean, the thing is, right, we do this leap of faith where we say, I can't control this thing. The universe will deliver its plans, whatever they are. But the onus is on us when we think about response, right? I always say the, your power is in your response, right? However you choose to respond to whatever opportunities, challenges, failures, mistakes, that's where your control lies. So you choose to respond to those autism ones. I wonder if there are ones in other part of your life that you don't see because you're like focused. Oh, I'm sure there's, there's, there's many. I'm trying to get better. Like, like humans say this, this word called balance. Right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to work on that as I become an old man, but um, I, I think I'm getting a little bit better at that. Yeah. I think we all learn the older we get, the more we seek the balance. <laughs> For sure. Well, I am so excited for our guest today. This was somebody that I have known for quite some time now. Um, and we've done a lot of really important work together that of course never gets the attention that it needs. Um, but she's also just an amazing human being. So I'm so excited to have Bridget with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Really excited to be doing this. Yeah, I'm so excited. So here's the cool thing about InfoDump. InfoDump is all about having fun and being ourselves and letting the world kind of see what it looks like when we are ourselves with each other and we just have our interactions, right? And about all the fun that we have and the things that we find funny and enjoyable. Um, and so I love that we get to talk about so many cool things with you today because Bridget is someone who I've had the pleasure of having fun with not on camera. And so we get to really kind of show people that part of ourselves. So I'm excited to share your joys with everybody. And I mean, when it comes to info nothing, like there's very little that it, I enjoy more than talking about my special interests that are like so random and so varied <laughs> that it's just like, yes, let's talk about mermaids or fairies or like free diving and fire before like it's yes. all over the place and it's it is fun. <laughs> it is fun. All right, Doug, I'm ready for your awesomely researched questions. Go for it. <laughs> Well, I, I was, I've been very excited to talk with you, Bridget, as, from doing research about you. Um, a lot of your interests, I'm very, I'm very excited to learn about. Uh, you know, the first is mermaids. You know, um, you were Miss Mermaid, Maine 2021. 
Um, so I'm just wondering, like, how do you move down that path? Like one day you just decide I'm going to, I'm going to be Miss Mermaid Maine. Well, kind of going with what you said, like you just decide to do something and the universe is like, okay. Um, I, I was in a car accident about three years ago that kind of, um, majorly kerfuffled my life, my direction, everything. And I found the mermaid world, uh, a important thing to know is that the mermaid world was going on outside of my knowledge and it has been for years it's fascinating so i started following different people on social media my friends and i in the before times during the pandemic would rent an airbnb or a pool and just go swimming in our mermaid tails because why not uh and so someone that i follow on instagram was talking about this mermaid usa pageant and i figured i'd toss my uh tail in the ring because yeah. it's uh a lot of advocacy and that's something that that's the backbone of my life honestly is advocacy not just in the autism sphere but in other spheres like mental health I've been really enjoying doing magnet fishing uh, to help clean up our local waterways, but it, it's been a really fun adventure that is opening a lot of doors for me because I get to talk about how being a mermaid is awesome and encouraging small children to grow up and be mermaids. Yeah. I think it's so amazing. So here's the thing about it that I like gives me goosebumps. When we talk about autistic joy all the time on InfoDump, that's the whole point of it. And we can, I can feel your joy as you talk about it. First of all, I can feel it through the screen. And I think that's amazing. But what I love is that it's this thing that's so out of the box and so not traditional and all of the things that autistics get accused of all the time right and yet it brings you so much joy so when you remove the criticism and the judgment from it there's all this joy just waiting there to be had right so how did you kind of get past what might be stigma around enjoying those kinds of things um a big thing that i talk about in the autism sphere is authenticity and as someone who's a bigger non-binary force of nature i can't really hide mm. i i never had the privilege of hiding and kind of being in the background and stuff just because of my nature of being that person that's like i see injustice let me stop it mm. picking fights with bullies at a young age so going into the mermaid sphere and just kind of figuring out what it is that I want to be in life and running with it has mm -hmm. been the biggest push. And over the course of the pandemic, which I'm sure is for a lot of people, I dropped a lot of the camouflaging and masking. I was working from home before the pandemic, so that didn't change too much, but I had a little autistic meltdown and completely dyed all of my hair because I discovered years ago not to cut it all off. Tried that once, <laughs> did not go well. Nope, sensory wise, I need my hair. Uh, and ever since then, just kind of finding more ways to externally manifest the creativity and the passion I feel inside, whether it's nail stamping, dyeing my hair, playing with makeups, being a mermaid, uh, it, it's been really empowering and also to know that there's a community out there. There's the Society of Fat Mermaids. Yeah, that's a thing. They're awesome human beings awesome. and mermaids. But knowing that there's non-binary mermaids, there's mermen, there's selkies, siren. The world is a lot bigger and more wild and more wonderful than I ever thought growing up. And I want to in part be that person that I needed as a kid yeah. in that time travel, Jeremy, bear me type of way. Yep, absolutely. Well, there's a good place to reference for you, Doug. Yes, <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> now, now Bridget, um, 
You also uh, have been involved in the uh, circus um, as an, an insured fire and LED performer. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yep. Uh, so instead of just running off to join the circus, I created my own circus. So I run a nonprofit social circus based in Portland, where we provide low cost and free circus programming for kids and adults of all ages, because especially if you have a disability, a lot of your income is going towards just trying to exist, medical expenses, and you can't sometimes get to afford doing the fun stuff in life that other people really don't have to think twice about being able to afford. But the circus should be for everyone. So that's why I started to create this nonprofit called The Way We Move. But also I discovered fire like eight years ago. Again, not in the like, I am Prometheus way, but more in the, I saw people doing it. I wanted to do it. So I decided to go and learn everything I could and climb all the skill trees. And now I am the most insured fire performer in the state of Maine with insurances in New York city, as well as the state of New Hampshire. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to get to play with fire this past weekend we did a memorial burn for a friend who passed away and i got to wear four foot tall fire wings uh i couldn't do much like spinning or movement with him but you know what i was just in there in a pretty dress with four foot tall fire wings i'm like that's enough that is enough <laughs> so. uh, i'm i'm scared of so many things in life and and one of the things that I thought about this week was I went out for a family dinner and we went to we went in uh, to a hibachi. And so we're, we're sitting there and the fire goes up and I and I get scared. I'm just wondering, like from a sensory perspective or just, you know, just a fear perspective. How does that fire affect you? Oh, in the best of ways. Um, <laughs> I am. I'm one of the sensory seeking autistics. Like that's that's my jam. Like I've, as a small kid, I was a sensory, sensory seeker, but didn't know it. Uh, it also took me three days to realize my arm was broken once. So as an adult, I've had to learn how to kind of be a better human and be like, okay, this, this bruise doesn't hurt now, but I should actually do something about it because I know in like two days it could get worse. So I've learned how to be a better human, but at the same time, I also do stuff like free diving and going down to 20 meters, uh, which is, has three atmospheres of pressure, which is like so good. Um, but doing stuff like fire breathing, flashing, that type of sensory regulation really helps me. But I also am the type of person who needs a very high sensory diet every single day. I need my weighted blankets. I have to wear specific types of clothing, can only eat certain types of foods at different intervals. So I've managed to find a way to do kind of the wild and chaotic in a recharging fashion, as it were. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love what, it. What are some of the coolest things you've done with fire? Uh, a fire wings was definitely like kind of on the top of the list. Um, I have a fire belt too, which is really cool. Like you're wearing the fire around you. I think part of it is I really like the element of using fire to tell stories. So I did back before he passed away, there's a author who made a book series called Straganona. Uh, about like an old witch in the village and I did the book kind of as I was using my fire props to kind of highlight that uh, I've memorized books and done them I like to do kind of a mix of storytelling and fire so talking about mystical lands and uh, that that's always fun because yes fire is a spectacle on its own and when you put a little bit of extra creativity into it, it's similar in my mind to looking at the different shapes of clouds as they're passing mm -hmm. by of, oh yeah, oh, I can yeah. see that in that 
yeah. fire movement. It's very cool. I think fire is one of my favorite visual stims. So I, you know, I could probably sit and watch you do that forever. <laughs> There's so many people that do like, and it's one of the big things that I try pushing my community to is also not just education for fire safety, but especially for young kids. Cause kind of the rule is, Hey, if your parents say you can spin a fire, you can do it, but like right. you have to do it safely. And I swear the little kids are way more punctual and like <laughs> very safety conscientious about all this stuff. Like they'll come to the fire safety meeting before anyone else. Cause they don't run on like hippie standard time. Uh, they're just like, we're here and sing in the front row, like dig diligently paying attention. And it's like, you're so cute. You're the future. Like, like yeah. awesome. And an another one of your interests is uh, fairies. How did how did that kind of evolve for you? Um, one of one of my best friends uh, is a fairy. Uh, so that is it, it's very whimsical. I think I I view the world. There's so much darkness and pain and struggles in the world, not just from a global political scale, but even interpersonally, like. My life has not been all happiness and rainbows. And I still make an active choice to bring the happiness, the joy to my life and the life of people around me. Because why not be a fairy in wings and go plant a bunch of flowers at a local park or um, go dress up like a mermaid and work on cleaning up a beach? like? doing good while spreading good in the world, I think is needed by more and more people. And being a fairy, being a mermaid, being a fire performer allows a lot of creative outlet in ways that I had seen something recently about how for those of us who've experienced a lot of trauma in childhood, being denied that type of play Mm -hmm. now being able to foster it and use it in adulthood is something else entirely because I was a kid that had to grow up way too fast and now as an adult I I feel like I get to do all that fun stuff with the dangerous boss of having a credit card right. um, <laughs> and I don't need anybody's permission either right like it's the the plus side of I'm an adult no one can tell me that I can't have ice cream for dinner downside is no one can tell me I can't have ice cream for dinner <laughs> every day right exactly but I that's I love that attitude. I wish I could bottle that and like throw that out into the world right it's like if we're all sad somebody has to start creating the joy somebody has to do it and if you don't have joy in your life you have to learn how to create it for yourself like you you must and I didn't think I was someone who could have a life with any joy in it for a lot of years. And so I think the idea that I could make it myself was not something that was imparted upon me, or at least when I did make it for myself, it was judged or invalidated or all of those lovely things. And I think an important thing too is our joy can look different ways. Like I was just showing someone some of the photos, the proofs for a mermaid photo shoot I did under the water where we had like five minutes left and he's like what idea do you have and I'm like I want to do something scary because mm -hmm. I am not a petite anything mm -hmm. like diminutive, diminutive words are never used to describe me but I like the scary stuff I like horror movies and so I make all these faces underwater and he comes up like almost choking on the water because it's so funny um, so doing kind of the scary mermaid stuff, I have friends who are professional haunters where they get uh, to like enjoy their life by working on creating silicone uh, appliques and working on body paint. And I, I think that's something too, where everyone's joy is going to look a little bit different and it's okay if they look different for different people and different situations too. Like your own mood. Sometimes you need the joy to be a little, a little darker and creepier. Yep. Absolutely. 
All right. Well, um, Bridget, every, every episode of Info Dump, we end, end the show with something called Inside the Autistic Studio. And we ask 11 questions to get just to get to know you a little bit better, things that people might not learn otherwise. Um, so the first question is, what are your pronouns? I use mixed pronouns. So she, he, they, fey, z, anything works for me. And what is your preferred STEM? Either fire or my cat or uh, a hot shower, which you cannot combine any of those. Like, <laughs> very distinct categories. Yes. Your, your cat won't appreciate it if you do. <laughs> They, they love to guard the bathroom, but like, <laughs> yeah, not a fan of showers. <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? Uh, it's not really a curse, but I love shitlord. Like describe, oh, they're such a shitlord. Like that is, I've never heard it. And now I want to use it everywhere. Yeah, I like so it's, many people who would fall under that category. Right. I just think of it kind of like um like ah oh, yes, you're king, king of the land of stench and stuff. But it's like, yeah, you're a shit lord. Like you're not even like the king. Like right. you're there's a gesture. <laughs> who do you love and what are you doing about it? Who do I love? I love my best friends, which is a tear. It's not like an individual, a tear. And I talk to my friends on a regular basis, even if it's just to share memes and check in. Um, but reaching out, um, even if it's just something little of, hey, this reminds me of you, I think is now more than ever really important for people because you can't always physically check in with them. Yeah, absolutely. I like that tear idea. Um, I've always I've always felt like if you just get the label of you're someone's best friend, there's so much pressure on you. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, like <laughs> as someone who like is Polly, it's like, I can't be expected to just have one best friend. Like, no, there's several, like there's the cooking best friend and like the nail polish best friend and like just, right spreading the joy. <laughs> uh, these next two are fill-ins. You may be neurotypical if? Uh, you may be neurotypical if you ask me how my day is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just that, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> All of my friends know, like, they're never going to, like, no, none of my friends actually ask me how my day is. <laughs> <laughs> you may be autistic if? Oh, you may be autistic if you're able to have multiple special interest conversations with people that just overlap. Mm. What's something you want to learn to do or be better at? Um, a thing that I want to try to learn how to do this next year is I'd like to learn how to weld. I'd like mm -hmm. to learn welding. I want to be like better friends with you, Bridget. I just want to do <laughs> things with you. Like yeah. I was thinking about stuff that I want to do that I really want to go do alone, which is so weird. But I want to go like learn, learn a skill. And you yeah, can't like really, like grab somebody and be like, hey, let's go learn a skill. But, like other people don't enjoy that. And, like I want. I to do. Like <laughs> let let's come learn skills together. Like at the right. mermaid convention, I learned how to. Uh, do mold making and work with silicone. And I'm like, ooh, I want to learn like this. Again, right? it's all about climbing skill trees. It's like- It is. Like, yeah. oh, how far can I go? And when will the interest run out? But I like to have skills like that. I like being a renaissance lady that knows lots of different things. Absolutely. Yeah, a jack of all trades. What autistic social media account should people be paying attention to? Autistic typing. 
autistic typing. If you don't know them, you need to. Yep. Good one. Yeah. What's one thing in your routine you could pos you couldn't possibly live without? At a default, I probably save my medications. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I am held together by humor, fairy dust, and a very well-coordinated amount of supplements for all of my medical conditions. Dog, cat, or must I choose? Cat. <laughs> yeah. Cat. Like, they're, they're literally, like, sitting right, like, behind me right now. Like, they'll come up because they love when I'm doing podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question what does autistic joy mean to you autistic joy to me is celebrating the moments whether they're small or large that allow us to feel perfectly at peace it's very similar to what is described sometimes as the flow state where you're not thinking about what you have to do later today. You're not thinking about that mistake you made yesterday or forgetting plans. You're perfectly in the moment. And it is good, not just for your mind, body, and soul, but again, as I was talking about earlier, I feel like it's good for the universe. Is that it? Was that all our questions? Though? That was it. Yeah. Why do I feel like there's so many more? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad to have had you here with us today, Bridget. I am fascinated and I hope that people are really seeing what it means for us to be authentic because I feel like um, they don't, people don't understand and they fascinate. Like, do we somehow communicate in some mysterious way with each other that we can't communicate with other people and all of this stuff? And I love that we can show them that we are not only capable people, but we are really thoughtful people. So thank right. you so I, I think that there's not enough emphasis that really gets placed on the kindness in our community. And I'll argue in some ways to a fault, like so many of us get taken advantage of because we want friendship. We want, we want to go the extra mile for others. And I, I think, we have to also take a moment to be kind to ourselves and enjoy the play. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That I really appreciate it. Um, I guess that's it for this episode of Info Dump, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And Doug and I will be back. All right.